Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're having an awesome day. Mike here from virtualrealityoasis.com and today I'm going to be talking about PCIe USB 3.0 expansion cards. So I've been working on this video for a couple of weeks now and I've been testing the Inertec card and I've been trying to run four sensors on an Inertec card or in fact even two Inertec cards but I just couldn't get them to play nice. So this is essentially what you've got. You've got the Inertec card, which is recommended by Oculus, but unfortunately, throughout all my testing, I couldn't get it to play nice with four sensors. I would have regular disconnects, or I would have a solid setup, and then as soon as I restart my PC, then it would drop out again, and I'd have issues getting it up and running again. So what I'm aiming for is some rock-solid tracking, and some no disconnects, and issues where I reboot this machine, I just want it to be working. So with the Inertec card, it is fairly cheap. It's £25. It features five external USB 3.0 slots and two internal slots. So this is a pretty cool little card, and I would probably recommend this for people that are running two sensors uh, only. Now, I actually even used a second card, and I'll show you that here now. I actually ran two of these cards uh, at the same time to try and get the four sensors working but even the two cards working, uh, it caused issues. So I did a bit of research and found a blog by Oculus recently, and they were talking about using four sensors with a card like this, and they recommended two cards. One was called the Rocket U, uh, I believe it was the 1144D, and the other one was a StarTech card, which is this bad boy that I've got here. So the difference between these two cards is a lot. You've got the Inertec card, which is £25, and basically features five external USBs, two internal USBs. This one is around £86, so more than three times the price, and it only has four USB slots and no internal ones. So why would you go for this one, you ask? Well, that's a very good question. The issue with this card here is that although it's got more ports, it's actually only got one controller on board. So the StarTech card here has got four external ports, but it's got four independent controllers. So that's gonna be pretty important. So what I'm hoping is that using the four dedicated controllers with each port is gonna solve any problems with incompatibility, disconnects and dropping in and out, and hopefully provide me with rock solid tracking for four sensors. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and install this into my machine, and then I'm gonna come back to you guys and let you know my conclusion. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's dive in. Okay guys, so this is the StarTech card installed in my machine. As you can see, it's just sitting there. Uh, it was pretty easy to install. Uh, I'd recommend installing into a, a Times 16 spare PCIe slot, which will be essentially you the slot that you would use if you had an SLI set up with two graphics cards. Uh, that way it's going to get the maximum bandwidth possible, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, not cause you any issues. So now that I've got the card installed in the machine, I'm going to give it some thorough testing over the next week or so, play plenty of games, and I'll report back and let you know my thoughts. Okay guys, so it has been about a week now, and I've been testing the new StarTech card with loads of different games, and I have to say, I absolutely love it. I've not had any disconnects or any issues whatsoever, uh, none of the problems that I was facing with the Inertec cards as I discussed at the very beginning of the video. So I know a lot of you guys out there use the Inertec cards and don't have any issues, but for some reason I even tried two different cards and two together uh, with the, the up-to-date drivers and just kept on getting blue screens of death. Uh, it was recording a WDF violation error. But I have to say, since switching over to the StarTech card, I've not had any issues whatsoever and the tracking has been absolutely solid and no disconnects whatsoever. So the way I've got it set up with my PC is that all four sensors are plugged directly into the StarTech card and then the Rift itself is plugged into my motherboard. So I would say as a disclaimer that four sensors is probably a bit overkill. Uh, I only actually run four sensors as I happen to have a spare one as I bought a second set of touch controllers for some future testing with mixed reality. But I would probably say that three sensors is probably the sweet spot. 
If you've got the three sensors set up in a good order, uh, then you can cover yourself pretty much for 360 tracking with those alone. However, if you're going to go with three sensors or four sensors and you're struggling with your USB ports, then the StarTech card is definitely the way to go and I would totally recommend it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the links for the StarTech card from Amazon down below. This is going to be an affiliate link just so you're aware guys. Uh, if you do buy anything from Amazon through this link it just gives me a little bit of a kickback. Obviously it's quite expensive to buy all this equipment to do these videos for you guys. So I hope you appreciate it and understand. So in a future video I'm going to be covering what cables you should be using with the StarTech card. Uh, and that's going to include 5 meter USB cables and 5 meter HDMI cables. So I've got some more testing to do. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know in the comments down below if you're using an Inertec card or if you had any of the problems that I've described or if the StarTech card is something that's interesting to you. Thanks again for watching guys and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.